2005, the um, UW Digital Collections contacted the museum um, and asked them to prepare um, a grant proposal with them to digitize um, slides and manuscripts that derive from nearly 40 years of field work there. Uh, we received the funding and um, we started um, planning to digitize this collection. The grant was received before I started there, so the project was sort of started before I came, um, but not really. Um, so the 35 millimeter slides that we have appear in shoe boxes like this, or some of them are still in carousels um, that haven't been taken out of the, well, in the carousels that haven't been taken apart uh, over the last 40 years. Um, and some of them have been organized into slide boxes. Um, and a lot of the metadata that you can see on the slides has never been uh, put into any kind of database until now. Some of the slide boxes in the shoe box have uh, information on them as well, and all of that needs to be added to some database. So we essentially started from scratch with, um, we didn't even know how many slides, we now guess about 5,000 slides. Um, and this project really sort of has three parts, and that is the physical slides, the digital images, and then the metadata. Um, but they all come together in sort of a strange way at the end. Um, uh, we purchased some equipment. We purchased this um, Nikon 35 millimeter slide machine, um, and it was about $2,500. And then we purchased a batch attachment, which you can see connected to the front of this, the slide scanner and the um, image on the, on the right. Um, and the batch attachment was about $500. So we spent roughly $3,000, which was a fifth of our total budget, which scared me a lot. But um, the batch scanner was worth every penny. Um, the regular scanner does one slide at a time. The batch scanner, batch attachment will allow you to um, put in 50 slides and we'll pull them all through. So it's automatic kind of because the slides often get caught. Someone has to be manning the machine, but they can be doing something else while the machine is running. So it saves a significant amount of time. However, each slide takes about two minutes to scan. Um, so there's a major time investment here, which is something that I didn't think of. I thought we'd be done with this in like a year. We're still working on it. Um, so after the slides were put in the machine, they came out. Um, a number was, a unique identifying number was automatically generated for the digital image, and that number was written onto the 35 millimeter slide. Um, and then the slides were organized in slide boxes, kind of. Um, we, our specimens are organized taxonomically, but the slides represent um, images of specimens that were collected and images of specimens that were encountered, and um, sunsets, and all kinds of things. <laughs> so it was fun for us to organize the slides. Um, so the easiest way for us to do it was by um, island and by year. Uh, but as we found piles of slides in various locations, we had to adjust things as we always do with collections when things are added. Um, and these slide boxes were not ever intended to be a long-term storage um, um, program. And we eventually um, purchased these um, modular slide organizing systems, which are archival. Some of the problems with the slides, which we won't necessarily get into today, but um, the colors are starting to fade. Some of the slides are 40 years old. The colors are fading. The um, slides are sort of becoming warped. Um, they need something other than um, other than being just sort of stacked in piles in the evidence. Um, so part of this project, even though it began as this digital collection that was going to be hosted on the UW library website, um, I somewhere along the line decided that I wanted this to be um, an archival digitizing program as well. Since we were doing this, we might as well do this in a way that we could, we could archive all the images, especially since some of the colors were fading. So that's essentially where the organization of the slides and the scanning ended. Um, and then we had to deal with the actual digital images. So the slide on the left shows the raw image. Um, 
with the black border, which all of those had to be cropped off. Something that I learned partway through this project was that with Photoshop, you can batch edit these slides, um, which I never did because I was, well, first of all, I didn't understand it, but second of all, I was hesitant <laughs> to, to do it because if you see the black border on the slide on the left, um, it's a little bit thicker on the left, a little bit thicker on the bottom, and I thought that if we set the program up to um, manage all of the thicknesses of the potential borders that we might cut off something that would be important on, a on an individual slide. Um, I don't know now if that was the best route, but that's what we did. Um, so we have kept the raw images and the cropped images. Um, and that seemed like a good idea at the time, and maybe it still is a good idea, but the raw image is about 40 megabytes, and the cropped image is about 25. So it takes up a significant um, which leads me to the um, organization of the digital slides. We organize the digital slides in essentially the same way that we organize the physical slides, and that is by island, and then by year within the island, and then by the unit identifying number that was generated by the slide scanner. Um, so, and then we kept the raw and um, crop images together. Um, and then I put the external hard drive up there because sometime during the early stages of this project, something happened to one of the computers and we lost a couple hundred images, um, which that two minutes a slide adds up to a lot of time. Um, but the bigger issue then was that because all of the slides already had, already had a number on them, when we went back to, we had to extract all of the slides from the organizational system after we identified what slides were missing, and then re-scan them in the same order to make sure that they had the same identifying number. Um, so you need an external drive or two, and a server um, would be helpful too. <laughs> um, next, um, so that is essentially the, the um, electronic organization. Um, but the metadata has really been the biggest problem. Um, so you can see that there are handwritten notes on the slides, and these notes relate to um, the, the day that someone was out, possibly to um, the field notebook, which you can see here. Um, and we just continue to sort of add things. In the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a handwritten number there in pencil. That's the unique identifying number um, that was written on the slide. So, as I said, some of the slides were related to individual specimens, voucher specimens. Some were just encounters. And so it was a little bit difficult to try to piece everything back together and go back and add this information to the field catalogs, um, to the actual specimens, um, either the, the jar label, specimen tags, box labels, to the obsession record, um, the catalog cards, because we still use those and um, the electronic database. And what I would do now as far as the electron electronic database goes is have a separate field for, um, specifically for the image number related back if there's an image that relates to that individual specimen. Um, this was also difficult, managing the metadata was also difficult because we received three large slide collections from individuals who had participated for many years on this project and all of them collected their data differently. Um, so, and I'll talk a little bit about our workflow or lack thereof. Um, so the result is this um, digital collection that's hosted at the UW libraries. And it looks really nice. There are images, and um, this is a FileMaker Pro database, and we use the database that they had set up. So we, not, none of the staff members of the museum were familiar with FileMaker Pro, so this was all very new for us. But we um, adopted some of the procedures that they use for FileMaker Pro and then, and then had to change things as we went along. Um, so this looks really nice from the outside, but it's a mess on our end. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I originally titled these last slides as recommendations, but then I decided that they weren't really recommendations because I, I shouldn't recommend anything. <laughs> Um, but more considerations about um, things maybe to think about as you're, if you're going to
to embark on a 35 millimeter slide digitization program. Um, and many of these things have been already said and probably will be reiterated later in the program, but um, the side what you're trying to achieve and set realistic goals. Again, this was started as a, um, an outreach program and then somewhere along the way I decided to make it in some archival program. And I'm not really sure what changed, if anything, um, but my mindset changed about it and um, so I'm not really sure what should have changed with the, the physical application of all of this. Um, develop a workflow plan, who will do the work and how. We had students scanning a lot of the slides, student interns, um, and they would scan the slides and they would crop the slides while the other slides were scanning at two minutes a slide. And, um, and then they would enter information into a log, either um, a log that they generated either in Microsoft Word or Excel. And then we would have a staff member who was more familiar with the um, catalog books and the collecting events go back and um, take the log and the field books and enter that information into um, FileMaker Pro. So this kind of goes back to what Gil said earlier. At first we sort of did the minimum information and then we tried to go back and fill it all in, but we're still filling that in. Um, and as I said, we were still backed up. So we have about 3,000 of the 5,000 slides scanned, but we're still going back to to enter slide information, slide number information into the field catalogs and session books and all of that. Um, so next, develop guidelines for digitization. For example, 35 millimeter slide should be scanned at 2,000 to 3,000 dots per inch, which is what the library recommended, which is why our files are so large. Um, save images as TIFF files, so <coughs> they're large files anyway. Um, decide how you will name and organize the electronic files. This was easy for us, kind of, because um, because we could do it by island and and year. Um, but it's not necessarily useful in that, as I said, some of the images are um, examples of the voucher specimen um, out in the wild, and some of them are just random images. So and they're all mixed in um, just because they they happen to be on the same island. Um, decide where you will handle the metadata, uh, add unique identifiers to each slide, um, use a database to help organize the information, for example, FileMaker Pro, your specimen database, a Word document, or Excel spreadsheet. Again, we duplicated those efforts, and I think I like having multiple people work on the same projects so that um, you can have some checks and balances, but there were too many people working on this project, and it just became very um, complicated. Um, and then how you will enter your metadata into the, the field notes or combine the, the metadata from the field notes and the slide information um, in the accession files, card catalogs, or books, jar box, or specimen labels. Um, decide how you will handle the physical slides, sort and store in a way that the slides can easily be identified and retrieved, which I already talked about, um, and in a way that hopefully they will be preserved longer than um, on the shelves and some random closet. Um, buy the appropriate equipment and supplies. Uh, a slide scanner and batch attachment were, um, even though it was a huge part of our budget, it was a significant um, part of the project. Um, buy an external hard drive or two that can be dedicated to the project and maybe take one off site. Um, just thinking. Um, buy boxes or containers for sorting and storing slides. This, as I did, it was sort of hard to kind of guess maybe what I would need and what I wanted to use, but there are a lot of options out there. Um, and then by image processing software like Photoshop. Um, and maybe more importantly than buying all the right stuff is learn how to use the equipment and software before we begin. I didn't, and um, I think that was a big mistake. <laughs> so, um, and then finally, take notes along the way and edit your workflow plan as necessary. 